Yellowstone supervolcano, a large anomaly below the caldera was spotted just overnight by NASA. And this is how they did it. This is by Callum Hoare on Express UK just in a few hours ago. Information gleaned from Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Lowenstein's analysis of what is going on. Yellowstone supervolcano scientists spotted the large heat anomaly coming from below the north of Yellowstone National Park. This is with the help of NASA satellites and what they revealed. The Yellowstone volcano located at the Yellowstone National Park sits on the edge of uh, the northwestern edge of Wyoming, bordering Montana and Idaho. The caldera is uh, labeled a supervolcano due to the capability to inflict disaster on a global scale should a super eruption occur. Actually, it's not sitting near Montana. It's also on under Montana and Idaho as well, and uh, even Utah. So it can, uh, if it has a super eruption as it had in the past, it could uh, be a catastrophe for the worldwide on a worldwide scale. The last event of this kind has not happened for more than 630 years, and any serious eruption in 70,000. So that was a serious eruption, but we had another 80 since then, according to Lowenstein. 80 eruptions since 70,000 years ago, and he believes that we're overdue for another one. Uh, this is where, from what he said, and uh, we did do uh, videos on this concerning his claims. Now, scientists at the United States Geological Survey, USGS, are always monitoring the volcano in case of situation changes. Jacob Lowenstein was the, uh, is the lead scientist in charge of monitoring Yellowstone. He reveals uh, what the U.S. has come to know, where the active magma chambers are located. He explained how his colleagues used NASA advanced space-borne thermal emission and reflection radiometer, ASTER for short, A-S-T-E-R, the ASTER satellite to produce a heat map showing activity in the park, and they measure this during the night when they don't have the radiation, the energy from the sun. It's uh, more easy for them to spot proper monitoring at night. Lowestein said in his 2014 explanation, the satellite technique that we use looks at heat flow. Greg Vaughn works with USGS in Flagstaff and uses the Aster satellite to specifically look at Yellowstone overnight when the sun's rays are no longer heating the ground. He can look at the areas that are hot and those that are not so hot. So looking at the map, some of the areas only have a little anomaly and some have a lot of watts per square. A lot of heat, that is. Dr. Lowenstein then went on to explain how one area had a particularly large amount of heat, heat anomaly below it suggesting that large growing magma chamber could be underneath it. He said a lot of energy is coming out of the ground at the sulfur hills and other areas. Uh, it's right near, uh, by the way, that is right near the, from you, you, what you see at the map, it's right near Norris Geyser Basin. Norris Geyser is where we had, we have the steamboat geyser, and uh, that started erupting almost every week since last March. It had over 30 eruptions last year, and it had about 14 up to now this year. But, uh, and we know that Steamboat Geyser, by the way, is the largest geyser in the world. Yellowstone Supervolcano contains about 60% of the world's geysers. They're all in Yellowstone. Now suddenly, uh, besides Steamboat activity, we have another uh, geyser becoming active in the Norris Geyser Basin, and that's Ledge Geyser. That makes a terrible noise. It's very noisy because it goes through a very narrow vent and comes out the side of uh, 
the flank of a mountain and you have to yell to each other to hear each other talk because it's so noisy. Now Aster satellite shows the heat below Yellowstone and uh, as we said that seems to be that magma is moving underneath. So uh, Lowenstein says this is a technique that we use every 10 years or so to compare if things are changing within the park. Well I hope it's more often than 10 years because I'm worried if it's only 10 years that they use this technique. They should be using it if not every day, every time the satellite passes over Yellowstone, uh, as often as it does that. Every time it passes over Yellowstone, they should be getting readings. Why? Because it's one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes in the world. You can't afford to have readings every 10 years. And let's remember, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was only established in the year 2001. That was uh, 19, 18, 19 years ago. So what is it? They've only had one reading up to now because the 10th year of the second decade has not lapsed yet. That's very surprising. Especially after they have all this uplift and deformation and all this uptick in heat. It's getting hotter. And also we have an uptick in earthquakes as you see from my uh, previous video. Now, we can also use, he says, some other satellite-based techniques as well. Dr. Lowenstein also revealed during the same lecture the threat that earthquakes pose in the area. He said, the Denali earthquake occurred in 2002, and it was a magnitude 7.9 that occurred on the Denali Fault up in Alaska. 7.9, and listen to what that had, all the way up in Alaska. He's saying, okay, so what relationship does Alaska have with Yellowstone? It's all the way up north, towards the Aleutians. And yet, it rocked Yellowstone. And yet, it rocked Yellowstone. Yellowstone felt it. It shook like a, a little um, bowl of water, or a big bowl of water. It shook from the Alaska Denali earthquake of 7.9. Quote, anytime you have an earthquake, especially on a strike slip fault, you'll get surface waves produced. Those are the ones that do a lot of damage to buildings. And in the case of this particular earthquake, it sent big surface waves out in a southeastern direction. That's towards California and, of course, the subduction zone. And we know that Yellowstone is on the subduction zone because that's where the Rockies are. Rock the Rockies were formed by the subduction zone. And that's where Yellowstone is. So he says, when the ground shaking got to Yellowstone, it set off small earthquakes, magnitude ones, twos and threes, but they were felt. That is a phenomena of triggered earthquakes. Well, we know that uh, one earthquake triggers, triggers another one, especially down the fault line. And we know that, of course, the San Andreas Fault goes all the way up to Alaska, all the way through. Canada, through Oregon, Washington, all the way through California, all the way down, of course, passing all the way down to South America. So that's the pressure that travels along the fault line. It's a reality. Now, besides the fact that they found this uh, thermal area overnight, they should be visiting it as soon as possible because they've started their geological field trips as of the 1st of May. Hopefully they'll be going there. It's a very difficult area to get to because there are no roads close by, so they have to walk up there to get to that area. It's uh, just northwest of West Thumb Lake. West Thumb Lake is the western part, the lobe uh, of the Yellowstone Lake, which sits over the caldera, the over the magma chamber of Yellowstone supervolcano. So we'll be getting more news from that. What is that new thermal area that has killed all the trees in that area? Is it new springs? Is it new geysers? Is it uh, new fumaroles? Is it mud pots? Or is it just heat underground that has killed the roots of the trees because of the increase in temperature? Uh, in any event, 
hopefully they'll get monitors out there, temperature monitors and seismographs, and have a better eye on what's going on instead of just relying on the haphazard coincidental images taken by uh, the satellites that may be passing overhead. And here I'm indicating to you the lake. And on the west, that little lob in the west is uh, the West Thumb Lake. And just northwest of that is the new thermal zone. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.